victory. Amen. This year is a year of victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we welcome you once again this morning. So grateful and thankful that you could join us. It's always a blessing when the body comes together as one body. Amen. And God is in our presence. He says we're two or more are gathered in his name that he's in the midst of us. Yes. So he was with you right there where you are in your living room, whether you are by yourself or with your family. God was present with you. Amen. So we like to always start our service with prayer requests. <coughs> So if you have any prayers, we would love to pray for you. So please text them to 407-490-4019. Again, the number is 407-490-4019. Also, a reminder that today is Communion Sunday. So we will be partaking of the Communion Sacrament <coughs> later today. So have that ready. Have your grape juice, your bread, your crackers, whatever you have handy so that you can um, gather with us at that time. We would start... Um, declaring Psalm 91 like we have been doing every every week this whole entire season there's power in the word of Jesus so we declare this so I like us to all declare it with one voice he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty I will say the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him I will trust surely he shall deliver you from the snare of power and from the perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. Now let's welcome Amen. Pastor Warren, who's going to bless us with the word this morning. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. What an awesome worship. What an awesome time to be in his presence this morning. Yeah. I don't take a deep breath because of me or anxiety, but I'm taking a deep breath this morning because of the situation, the circumstance, and the moment that our nation is in today. I don't take that lightly. The nation today that you know I grew up with is not the same nation that it is today. And if you're hearing my voice today and you're in my age group, over 50, you really understand that. The younger generation, if you're listening, you need to look back and look at the history of this nation. Even 30 years ago, you're living in a different nation today. Yeah. The nation I, I woke up with 30 years ago and the nation I woke up with today, the surroundings and what I see and what I hear are completely different. I never thought I would see today. That's why I'm taking a deep breath for this nation this morning. Amen. Amen. And I encourage you to do the same thing. We are in a bad situation is the best word I can put it in. America has become a nation that has been morally bankrupt and spiritually weak. It's a nation full of perversion. It's a nation full of greed and pornography. It's a nation full of profanity, a nation full of pedophilia, a nation full of prostitution, a nation of infidelity, a nation of hate, a nation of racism. A race of lust, implicit drugs, lawlessness, violence, sex trafficking. That's where we stand today. We are a nation in a need of repentance and a nation to come back to the one true God, a holy God. That's personally and nationally. I'm speaking to both the people, myself and you, and as a nation, not just one or the other, because you can't separate us. If we fall, the nation falls. If the nation falls, we fall with it. Amen? Yes. Amen. But there's hope. The hope for America can be found in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 
And it says this, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will hear their lands and it will heal their nation. Your land is your nation. We are in that need today. We need this in our life. And it says, if we, my people, who are the people? It's you and I. We are in a need for a revival in our life, a spiritual awakening to the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only true God. And a nation, we need to surrender and hit the need to the one true God as a nation. Amen? And it says, if we will humble ourselves, the hardest thing that we seem to be having a problem with right now is humbling ourselves and admitting the truth to where we really stand. You cannot have a correction in your life, or if, whether it's spiritually or physically, if you will not humble yourself and admit that you have a problem. If we admit, as this nation, we have fallen away from the grace of God and the hedge of protection is down. Amen? Amen. He says, when you seek him with all your face, he wants you in his face today is what I'm telling you. This nation needs to be in God's face, not throwing him out, kicking him out, running away and telling our children that this nation is in inherently evil, racist and all of the negative things that we're hearing today. God has another word to say. I'm telling you about this nation. This nation was founded on the principle and the bedrock of his word. And he's not through with us yet. I'm telling you right now, Amen. we need a radical change. Yeah. Anybody believe that today? Yeah. Yeah. Again, I'll take a deep breath. I wore myself out with praise and worship today. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what you should be doing right now. We're at a crossroads of, of defeat or victory for your family and for this nation. You can't separate them. If our nation falls, you fall with it. I'm taking a deep breath because I'm praising and worshiping so hard anymore that I have, I believe that the prayer that uh, Jesus, we talked about in our Bible study, he had sweat of blood coming out. I want to see that today. We need to be having blood, sweat, and tears in our prayer life and in our prayer and fasting life to see a revolution uh, coming through this nation, not in a war that you physically can put your hands on, but a spiritual battle that we can win when we humble ourselves as a nation and as a people. Amen. And he said that when we get rid of our wicked ways, we have them. I just went through a whole list. We are at a way that we are living in total immorality. Total. We have lost our way. We have gone off the straight path and we are on a crooked path. And it's a path that's leading us to destruction. Yeah. Today, I pray that we take the blinders off. Amen. Amen. We're in the need of it. America has become a nation of division amongst its people and amongst its leaders and the people who rule the land. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We believe today that a lie is truth. We believe today that a truth is a lie. We have people in leadership actually pushing that on us today. Yeah. There's a division. One group is saying that the truth is truth and it will set you free. There's another group saying it's a lie and it's the truth. And that is not true. Follow along with me. We have evil and good. We have one set of people that are running this government that believe that evil is good today and good is bad. Yeah, right. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. The truth will set you free, the Bible says. Amen. Yeah. We have one group that says it's okay to go out and riot, not protest in the street, but you can't step into church and give honor and praise to your Lord and King of Kings. Not good. Which group do we want to support? We have a division amongst the leaders in this country that pass the laws that it's okay to kill a baby in the womb up to nine months. God has another word to say about that. We have another group that says, I will protect the sanctity of life when I will back it with laws and I will not fund abortion people, Planned Parenthood. We have a group that wants to take your taxpayers' dollars and support it, your federal taxpayer dollars, and say, I'm going to support it up until birth. And we have another group that says, no, we will fight for life, the sanctity of life. Yeah. The womb should be the most protected yeah. place in the planet, in the universe for a child. Yeah. We have a division. We don't see clearly today. We're not seeing with clear eyes because our hearts are contaminated. Our hearts are blurred. And we are not serving God with a clear vision. Amen. Amen. We have a one group that is divided. They say that we will not support the police. We have another group that says we will stand by the police and law and order. We have one group that's saying they can come into your neighborhoods. They can they can plunder. They can rape. They can kill. And we will not protect you. And this group is saying, no, we will stand on the Second Amendment rights to bear arms. And that was the reason 
I want you to understand today when we look at the Second Amendment rights that it wasn't because the founding fathers thought that they needed a gun to go hunting. It was a hunting nation all the time. They knew how to hunt. It was to protect from evil, corrupt people in government because they came from a place that they had to fight the injustice because the government and the church were one. And they said, when you can bear arms, then it will stop evil, greedy people that are in charge from trying to take you over completely because they know you can defend yourself. Amen? Amen? So we need people that will say yes to protecting yourself and no to taking away our Second Amendment rights. Amen? Amen. We have a divide. And if it's a house is divided, Mark 3.25 says this, if a house has a divide against itself, that house cannot stand. Amen. Look at where we're at today, ladies and gentlemen. We are not standing. We are falling in every area of this nation, and it's affecting our homes, our livelihood, our businesses. Every breath of air that we take has been divided because we put God last and not first. Look where we are today. We can't even go to church. You can't sing in church. We are being taking away the rights that have been given to us, and the people in this nation have died to protect these rights. Amen? Amen. America is now a nation going to the polls again. Yes. You need to understand. And we're getting ready to cast our vote. America now has a chance to honor God. Amen. How, Pastor? With your vote. With your vote. I'm telling you today that honoring God is the most important thing we need to start doing. We need to humble ourselves and honor Him. Honoring Him with our vote. On 11-3-2020, you'll either vote for God's position or you'll vote against God's position. Yes. There's no other way to look at it today. You are either for God or you're against God, and your vote will determine that. Yes. You will vote for the party who will stand for him, or you will vote for the party who will go against him and not honor him. Amen? Amen. And there's three things today that I want to tell you that are non-negotiable. They're non-negotiable if you're a Christian and you say Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior in your life. We must draw a line in the sand behind this pulpit, and this pulpit needs to speak the truth so you and I can go out and do what's right according to God's word and not what we feel. Amen. Not what you feel. Your feelings will lie to you all the time. Look back in your life. They lied to you about the girl you were supposed to marry. Now you're divorced, right? They lied to you about the thing you were supposed to put in your body, told you to make you feel good, and it almost killed you. You don't go by your feelings. You go by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. This book, God's word, yeah. not by what you think. Amen. 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 I have three things I want to give you that they are non-negotiable if you're a Christian and you're getting ready to vote. Number one is sanctity of life. That's it. If that was the only thing I talked to you about today, that would be the end of this discussion. It's sanctity of life. You need to vote for a party, a party that will choose life over death. Yeah. In the womb should be the most protected. I've said this several times today. The most protected place on this planet for a child. It should not be a decision of whether it's going to come out or not. We're praying that it comes out healthy. Not that we're going to take it out personally and rip it out and then sell the body parts. Yeah. You need to vote for a platform that will say enough with spending tax dollars on supporting such an evil evil practice in this nation. Over 62 million human lives have been ripped out of the womb in this nation alone. I'm talking about the United States. If you look at the world every single year, almost 42 million babies are being killed in the name of money and profit and somebody's choice. You don't have a choice to take a life. God said, you don't have a choice to take a life. Matter of fact, he came in and saved your life from, de de from hell and eternity. You need to protect life. It's the most sacred thing that God has to offer us life. Amen. Amen. Honor God with your vote. As a Christian, honor God as with your vote. Amen. Amen. Number two, sanctity of marriage. One party supports the breaking up of the nuclear family, which is a man and a woman and their children. Amen. Mark 19, 5 says this. For this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. He did not say that it is okay for a man to marry a man or a woman to marry a woman. He said it's sinful and you will die in your sin. We need to stop putting people in office that will push legislation through, which we have for same-sex marriage. You will either stand for God when you vote or you will stand against them. There's one platform that stands with them on this subject and one that does not. It's a non-negotiable as a Christian. If you call yourself a Christian, you cannot vote for a platform that supports 
the, the separation of the nuclear family. You cannot. The truth will set you free. Amen. Honor God with your vote. And the third one is religious freedom. One party supports and will back it up with federal laws to keep your conviction, your religious conviction safe. Do you hear me? Yeah. That you will be able to go and walk out of your house and go into any church that you choose to go to worship God. That you will not be told to be locked down in your house that you can't freely worship, but yet you can go out and freely protest and riot. Right. Amen. There's a party platform that says no to this, and they will put laws on the books, and they already have. There's one that says right now that if they get put in the office, that they will take some of the laws that protect the religious freedoms, like the uh, Religious Freedom Restoration Act which protects health care workers that choose not to perform abortions or be an, an assistant in the abortion industry and they don't have the they will have the right not to do it because their religious conviction it will allow a christian organization that adopts children and gives them into homes to put them in a nuclear family and not one of the same sex marriage they say they will take that off the books. That law is there and it's a good law. You vote for the wrong platform, they will lose those rights. And you will lose the right to be able to worship God when you want to, how you want to, where you want to. Honor God with your vote. So we talked about the three. They're non-negotiable. If you're speaking, hearing, talking, and you tell anybody you're a Christian, number one, sanctity of life. You can't support it any other way. The sanctity of marriage, the nuclear family, and religious freedom in our nation. Yeah. Those are the three nails in the coffin, and you can take either one, whichever platform, and you need to do the homework. You need to know who supports this and who doesn't. I speak to too many people that don't have no clue about any of these things. They look at a person and say, I can't vote for that person. You're not voting for a person. You're voting for the platform because the person is not the whole party. Right. Amen. Amen. Honor God with your vote. Amen. As Christians, we should honor God in all that we do. Colossians 3.17 says this. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We should look beyond our selfishness. We should look beyond our circumstances. We should honor God in all that he gives us. We should honor God with all that he does in our life. What he gives us, we should honor him with our families. Amen. Amen. We should honor him with our businesses. We should honor him with our jobs. We should honor him with our finances. But most of all, and especially, we should honor him with our nation. Amen. With our nation. We have to take the responsibility for the future of what God has given us and entrusted us with. Yeah. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me is what you should be saying. The future of this generation for your children and your children's children depends on what you do now. You were born for a time such as this. Amen. Honor God with your vote. This nation is depending on people like you and I that call themselves Christians. You call him by his name. You need to honor him with what you do. He's entrusting you and I to stand up and fight the fight. He left and said the fight is yours and mine. What are you going to do come November 3rd? Genesis, go to Genesis 12, 1 through 3, really quick. I'll start reading. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land that I have shown thee. And I will make thee a great nation. Underline the nation. He honors the nation. I will bless thee. He's talking about the nation. And I will make thee great. And thou shalt be a blessing. He's talking about the nation. He will make that nation great. And he will bless that nation so they can be a blessing. And I will bless thee and bless thee and curse him and curse thee. And thou shalt all the families of the earth be blessed. Listen to me today. Abraham was the father of many nations, the Bible calls. He was the father of Israel. He was the first person to spread the idea of monotheism. It's one God. In one God belief. And God told Abraham to leave his place of birth and go to the land that he would show him. Not just the land, the nation. The nation of Israel. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. I can get a better amen than that. Amen. We need to support. Yo, I said Israel. 
we have a president today supporting Israel. I'm ex that's one of the greatest things our government today has done. That is an amazing thing. He said, I will bless those who bless thee. I will curse thee who curse thee. I just read it. Do you want, you want to be blessed? You want to be cursed? Support Israel. Amen. This nation, America, was, a, was founded by a people who also left their birthplace, just like Abraham, in pursuit of religious freedoms. The freedom to freely worship the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, when they left, they were a persecuted nation. They were under attack because the government there and the church were, had regulations and rules, and they couldn't freely worship the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they left. In Exodus 5.1, you know the story. If you read your Bible, it's the story of the Exodus. And Moses is going before the Egyptian king, the Pharaoh of the time, the ruler of all the earth. And he said, let my people go to worship our God. He didn't just say let them go so they can just go and have a good time, have a party, build a business. Let's just have fun, kumbaya. He said, so we can worship my people. And that's exactly how this nation was found. They said to the king, to the same thing, the king, let my people go. And then they were, they left. And you know the story, what happened. In both scenarios, in Egypt, there was a battle, there was a war, and God came in and supernaturally took care of the people that put God first, that said he is the one true God. And the same thing happened in the United States. They left a nation that was suppressive. They left a nation that had rules and regulations, stopping them from worshiping the way God called them the worst. And they said, let my people go. And we fought a bloody battle for the independence of freedom, not just the independence to go to a place. Matter of fact, it was the hardest decision they ever made because they had jobs, they had families, they had security, they had food. They left and because they were called to a place, this nation, because God says that I will bless thee so they can be a blessing to others. And that's what this nation has become. Amen. I shall bless thee. Honor God with your vote. You hear me? This Amen. nation is precious and it should be preserved. In God's eyes, the nation comes first and the nation is what's precious. And if the people will submit themselves, the nation will be blessed. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Come on. This is important today. I hear them praising here. I hope you're praising this message at home because th by the end of this year, from what you do or don't do, you're going to see the results. Amen. Whether you like it or not, once you don't do something come November uh, 3rd, it's too late to take it back. Yes. When you do something, you're going to celebrate and say, I was part of that victory. Amen. Don't have regrets come this Tuesday in this nation. Amen. Genesis 12, 2, he said, I shall bless thee. Thou shall be a blessing. Do you understand what you have in this nation? Yes. That's what I need to tell you. I need to remind you of what you have in this nation. Because this nation was founded be seeking and searching the one true God. And he said, I'll bless that nation that does that. We have been the most unbelievably blessed nation in the history of the world in the shortest amount of time that we've been here. Amen. You don't know what you have. Especially you young people. We have we've had the most finances ever bestowed on a nation in the history of the world. And it was for a reason, so we could be a blessing to others. Like no other nation, we have the most wealth, we have the most opportunities, we have the most freedoms. Are you listening? You have freedom of speech. We still have that, that's why we're fighting. We have freedom of religion, we still have it, we're still fighting, that's why we have to fight this. Freedom of due process. Yeah. Oh, come on, we know this. You have the right to choose what job you want, what school you want to go to, what language you want to speak. You can't do that in so many other places of the world in the history of this country. It was unbelievably different. You couldn't just walk around in other nations and be free like we are free. Free to serve who you want to, to love who you want to, 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 to wake up every morning and not have to worry about going outside and getting shot. Yeah. To walk down the street in peace. Amen. To live a life of happiness. To have a freedom that you've never ever known. Most of you young people. You take it for granted. You, If we don't stand up and let on, on the third, you will realize a few years from now how precious you don't realize what you have until you lost it. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hindsight 2020, we don't want to have regrets. Experience is a horrible teacher. I said this the other day. We don't. We need to learn from the history in the past. Amen. Amen. And we have been blessed to bless others. That's what the verse just said. The nation that gives God a knee and, and humbles himself and puts him first, the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, Jay. And he said, and we have been. 
Thank you. We have been the most benevolent nation. Thank no, I didn't God. say the perfect nation. Matter of fact, got history. But if you look at all of them, we are way ahead. Yeah. We've made mistakes. It's admit the truth, but we've learned from it. We corrected it, and we moved on and changed people's life in the world. Amen. We have more places today. We have had more research in this nation that has blessed other nations. We have 18 of the top 20 research institutes today in this nation that are blessing the other nations with the technology. Amen. Think about that. We have, have more patents and more inventions that change people's life. Every time you get on a plane, remember who, where that came from, this blessed nation. I can go down the list and down it. We have sent people out in ships, in convoy, convoys, and food, and relief supplies, and medical supplies, yeah. and people leaving their families every time that there's a disaster, every time that there's a war. We leave. We have the, the Korean Peninsula. I, I, I was there. I, I, I'm serving for the military. I saw this. Over 100 million people today enjoy the freedom of this nation taking the blessings that God gave us to go bless others. Amen. He designed this nation to bless others. And we, we, we saw a chance to give people freedom like we had. And no tyranny, no tyrant could come over and take it. That area, that theater right today, 100 million people have been blessed. Men and women died on the soil over there. Families here lost husbands and wives and sons and daughters. And the only thing we ask from the nation is give us some land to bury our dead. Yeah. We didn't want nothing back. We've never asked for the money. We've gone and had an answer through the Bible. When you see a need, be the answer. Yeah. Love thy neighbor. Thy neighbor for this nation is around the world. We have sent more people out with the good news of the gospel that has changed eternity. It has shrunk hell and increased heaven because of this nation. I'll say it again. Hell is smaller because of this nation and heaven has been enlarged. by Amen. Not by design, but because the choices you and I made in this nation was set upon a rock and we are blessed. Don't forget, I say all this to remind you that the nation needs to be preserved. We may have faults, we have, may have issues, but we have admitted them and we have fought to change them like no other nation. No other nation. Luke 12, 48 says, Everyone to whom much is given, of him much will be required. Amen. Much has been given to us. And if you don't know that, I pray today that you will get people into your life that will open your eyes to how much we've been given in this nation every advantage there's no excuse it doesn't matter where you come from the size shape color language it doesn't matter yeah the walls have been broken the barriers are down we fought to break those barriers down people gave their life to set people free when there was an systemically racist world this nation stood up and said all men are created equal we fought Hundreds of thousands of people died to set people free. So there will be no divide. You don't know how lucky you are. Stop using the past to, to separate the future and to take us backwards 200 years. This nation today is the one who led that fight where all other nations, all other nations before us lived in a world of slavery. We are not systemically racist today. We have fought that and we have more laws on the books today. We have equal opportunities, but people are not perfect. God. People are not perfect because they have sin in their life. When you get sin in your life, you will look at people and say, that's my brother in Christ. That, I love them. I will treat them right. I will act around them right. I will promote them. I will lift them up. I'll put myself second to put them first because that's what Jesus Christ did in our lives. Amen. Amen. I'm reminding you what we have we can't lose it. Your vote counts. As a Christian, honor God. Amen. I've come to remind you today how much has been given to you. So you are required to give it back. You are required. Honor God with your vote. Put people in government that will honor God. Amen. Stop looking at people on the surface and look at the hearts of people. Look at the hearts of the platform. 1 Peter 2, 13 through 14 says this. God set up the institution of government. It was not man. He says to punish the evil and reward those who do good. To establish justice over our nation. Isn't that amazing? You thought that somebody 400 years ago or 2,000 years ago just set it up. Not in this nation. Not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I set it up. So if you're doing what's right, you won't have a problem with the government. 
If you do what's wrong, you will, because there has to be justice and there has to be no lawlessness in the land, is what he was saying. Romans 13, 4 says, they are ministers of God. The people he puts, the elected men and women that are in that are in the position of the government are ministers of God in the government. They, they work for him. Do you understand that? That's why it's so important to honor God with your vote. As Christians, we have to have a responsible vote for the party that puts God first on the moral laws and not your thoughts. The moral law of God will overprevail the problems in this nation. Yeah. Oh, I hope somebody's getting this. Amen. We as Christians, our believers, should study the candidates. We should study the platform on the Republican and the Democratic side and their positions and compare it to scriptures and not what you feel, not what you believe, not what you think. Because if you look at your life, what you felt, what you believe, what you thought, got you in all your trouble. It's Amen. until you hit your knee and then you realize that you are the problem. And when we do that as a nation, as a people, we will put godly people that work for him in the government, and we won't have this nonsense going on today. Amen. Amen. I believe that we are in a crucial, critical time, that if you hear my voice today, and you do not do something, you can't sit on the fence this time. Yeah. Romans 3, the Bible says that I know your deeds, you're neither hot nor cold, because you're neither one or the other, hot nor cold, and to spew you out of my mouth. You can't be a fence sitter is what I'm telling you, because if you don't vote this election, for what God says, then you are voting for what God does not want, so you vote against him. You be for him or against him is what I'm saying today. Which one are you going to do? He says today choose life. Life is in your vote. Yeah. Amen. A baby's life in the womb is in your vote. Amen. The judge that sits on the bench, the life of people going in and out of this prison system is in your hands because of our votes. Amen. If you have the people with the right hearts and the right mindset and the right eyes that see the world through the eyes of Jesus Christ, they will do what's right according to the word of God before they do it before the word of man. And they will shut down their feelings. They don't care what they think. They care what well, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God before they make a decision. And they will have the eyes, like I said this earlier today, that won't be blinded or, or, or spiritually blurred. And their heart will be right because the right thing's getting in. Whatever you see is going to your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Everything that you do comes from your heart. Your vote's going to come from your heart. Don't tell me it's because of one person. Don't tell me it's because of someone did 20 years ago. What about you? Look in the mirror. Let the first person that has sinned, Jesus Christ said, when the, when the Pharisees and the people surrounded the prostitute, that she was caught in adultery. Yes, she deserved something, but not from the people. It was from the Lord. Amen. It was from the Lord, not from you. Amen. Vengeance is mine. How can you? He said, let every person that had a stone, he said, let the first one without sin cast the stone. Yeah. Are you going to cast a stone when you have a bank account full of stones? When are you going to empty your bank account out of the sin and then you're going to have clean eyes to look at someone and then you're going to say, come with me. i got to bring you to the real true judge. His name is Jesus Christ. And he told the woman that day, they all dropped their stones. Drop your stones. Stop hurling stones at people that you don't really know and you're watching on a TV and you are judging them based on things you don't really know the truth. God is the one who puts people in place. God, not you. He says it in his word. And if you believe his word, you have to follow in line with what I just said. Yeah. He, they dropped their stones. And he looked at the woman and he told her, go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. He didn't hold it against her. And that's where you and I should be today. Look at what they've done and what they accomplished. Look at where they came from and where they are, not where they used to be. You need to burn the bridges of your memories. Here's the problem. We want to forgive, but we never forget. Yeah. Isn't that true? We're in a nation that we say, oh, we forgive, but we never forget. And then every time we have to make a crucial decision, we, the enemy starts bringing up something in your past or the person's past. The TV, the, 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 the evil and corrupt news centers and stations in this country. Well, they'll put something up. That's all you needed to see was one minute. And you start remembering the past and you forgot that their past was forgiven. And then Amen. you judge them on it and you make a decision based off of someone's past. I pray that nobody makes a decision based off of your past today. Amen. Your past is clean and forgiven as a Christian. Amen. 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 Our nation is too. No matter what we've done wrong, we've had men and women that are intercessors, yeah. warriors, prayer warriors, hitting their knees for you and me sometimes. Yeah. We should all be doing that. That's right. 
Then you will watch this nation not be divided. It will come together like never before. Amen. The way it was started is the way we're supposed to go out, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Amen. We are not going to be conquered from without, but we will be conquered from within. The Roman army was the same way. It was never, ever been able to defeat militarily. They couldn't. They were too strong. We're too powerful. So are we. But they divided and fell from within. And the greatest empire back then was dissolved in such a quick time. We are on the verge of the same thing if we do not humble ourselves. Yeah, Amen. Right. Amen. I wasn't making this a long, a, a long statement today because the point is so critical. I'm going to get nailed to this down to the point. I'm going to close with this. I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. James Dobson, if you don't know him, look him up online. Great man of God. He was speaking the other day, and I was listening to him, and he said that he received an email when he was speaking about this subject. See, got people who are not afraid and don't have fear will stand behind the pulpits and speak the truth. Like today, Covenant Fusion Church is speaking Amen. the truth that you and I need to hear. He was speaking, and he was, he was, he was literally attacking these points extremely strongly. And he said, my wife interrupted me as he was getting ready to go into what I'm going to tell you. And she said, I got an email. And here's what the email said. I am going to quote the email. It is so powerful, it needs to be repeated throughout the, this nation. Okay, come on. And it says this. This is a, not a junior high or high school popularity contest. I'm not voting for the person. I'm voting for the platform. As Christians, this is what you should be saying. I'm voting for the Second Amendment. I'm voting for the Electoral College. I'm voting for the republic in which we live. Yeah. I'm voting for the police. I'm voting for law and order in the land. Yeah. I'm voting for my military. I'm voting for the veterans who fought and died for this country. Yeah. I'm voting for the flag that has been misplaced and not flying in the nation. I'm voting for the right to speak my opinion without being censored. I'm voting for secure borders. Yeah. I'm voting for the right to praise God without fear. I'm voting for the unborn soul at risk of being aborted. Yeah. I'm voting for the freedom of the American dream. I'm voting for good against evil. I am not just voting for one person. I am voting for the future of our nation. Amen. Amen. That couldn't have been better said. Today is the day that I'm telling you, your vote counts. Honor God with your vote. I'll add a few more. I am voting for protecting Israel, standing along the side of Israel, coming along with the only nation that God says, if you bless them, he'll bless you. And I've seen that. Four years ago, we stopped blessing them. And the minute the new president came in, we started blessing them. I've seen things miraculously change in our nation. The, because the man who made promises and kept his promises because God backed them up. The Jerusalem the, in Israel, the, the capital is now exactly where it needs to be for him to come back. Until that was acknowledged, Christ couldn't come back. Yes. He had to come back in to where he said he would sit on his throne. That's right. The land that he gave him, the nation he gave him. I'm voting for the right for school choice where nobody can tell me where I can send my kid. If I want to send my child to a Christian school, I will be able to send them. The curriculum that I want them to see, I'm voting for that. They will not see that Joe and Joe is able to raise a family. Joe and Joe cannot produce a child. I don't want the nuclear family in my schools. Amen. I want to vote for a school choice that where there is not an atheist or God-hating professor teaching my children that this nation is wrong and it's corrupt and that there is no God. I'm voting for school prayer, that we bring school prayer back. When we vote right people in, right laws will change the corrupt ones that were put in by evil people. I'm voting for the Ten Commandments. As a Christian, you should be voting for these things. I'm voting for the Ten Commandments that are being taken down to be put back up. I'm voting for the statues of great men and women that, that have been torn down. George Washington, think about that. Tearing him down, wrapping him with a flag, and burning it on the ground. It, it, that, that to me is a sin in itself because the yeah. heart of that, of that attitude and that attack is sinful. Yeah. Unbelievable. I'm voting in God we trust to stay yeah. at the forefront of our government. Yes. Yeah. On our money. On our paperwork. On our declaration. I'm praying that when people swear in to be judges, they swear in on a Bible and not a comic book like I've seen recently. Yeah. 
They need to be swearing in on God and, and admitting that he's in charge, not them, if they're going to be putting the laws in and, and, and putting people in and out of jail in this nation. I'm voting for religious freedom, that I will have the right. He, we left the nation to come to this nation. This nation is blessed. The religious freedom is the most important thing right now, and it's on the verge of being taken away. I'm praying that we will be able to open up this nation. I'm praying that the right platform in the party gets in, that we will be becoming a nation that says, open up the churches, open up the schools, open up the restaurants, and we rebuke the sickness of the virus. We don't deny it, but in Jesus' name, we have the power to take it out. The enemy can't stop us, but until we're united and not divided, we will keep going through what we're going through. Yeah. I'm for voting for, I am not voting for the platform of socialism. Yeah. I will not vote for something that has never worked and has taken every freedom, every right, and every opportunity away from the men and women in the nations that had it before. We have millions of people that have run from those nations and come here, the most freest nation, so they wouldn't be under a dictator rule, a government-controlled society where they have no right to go to church and to worship. They can't choose the school that they want. They can't even freely walk down the street. They have people with weapons controlling them, military controlling them. We will not surrender to socialism. I vote against socialism. And as a Christian, you should too. Because the number one thing that is happening today, they're shutting down the church. Because if they can shut down the church and not get you to, if they got control of the church, they got control of the nation. And that's what happened in social. That's what happened in Cuba. That's what happened in Venezuela. They took the church and silenced it. They took the Second Amendment rights that we have. They disarmed the people, shut down the churches, and then everything they said, they took it back. Yeah. And then they had complete control of the people. We will not give in. Amen. Tell you, Amen. and I close with this. As Christians, you have to vote. Yeah. You cannot sit on the fence no more. And as Christian, I tell you today, your vote counts. And yeah. I expect to see you at the polls. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, let's stand up. Let's honor God. Come on. I know you're tired. This is a short message today. You can't give me that excuse. Let's stand up and let's praise. I want to make it strong and short. Today, we are in a short time period. We have two more days. Get outside of your church today. Get outside your living room today and tell people why they need to vote. Don't sit back. This is a crucial time in our lives. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we lift you up today. We exalt you. We hit a knee, Father, in a spiritual knee and a physical knee right now, Father. And we come before you and we admit that we fall short. We admit that we need you. We admit that we need to change our heart and our mindsets. And we need to do it so we can change the heart and the mindset of this nation. Father, we, we're sorry for what we've done before. But we right now admit the truth, Lord. That we weren't always doing what you called us to do. We were just looking at what we saw and not what your word says. And today, Father, we commit to your word. So when we go to the polls, that we will vote you in place of a person. We will Amen. vote your laws and your precepts and moral laws that you say will please you and not dishonor you yes. over what we feel and what we think. I pray, Father, that there will be peace for each and every person that heard this message today and an eye-opening experience for those who didn't know this truth. Yes. I pray for you to be bold today. Go out and tell somebody. Bring people into that light. If you know they haven't prayed and you don't know where they stand, tell them. You can yes. go and tell them, hey, I heard this today. It changed my life. Don't vote for a person. Look at what it says in their platform. Look at what their platform stands for. I pray that their platform, their opinions will be open to you right now. Father, I pray for the Holy Spirit to move amongst yes. the people that have not voted right now in this nation. That there will be blinders and scales yeah. taken off yeah. to the truth. That the lies of the media and the lies have been perpetrated through the airwaves of Satan. He's the prince of the air. Shut him down right yes, now. Lord. The last two days are important. We need each and every Christian to stand up. I pray for every Christian to vote. If the Christians would come out in full force, we will win. And we will win God's victory, not ours. We will win and have our nation come back. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And everybody Amen. said, Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you didn't forget we are having communion. Miss Christine will be coming up to take our tithes and offerings and doing communion. God bless you. Love you. Talk to you soon. See you at the polls. Christian, your vote counts. Amen. 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 Give Pastor Warren another appreciation clap. Thank you, Pastor. We have some 
awesome pastors in this church. Amen. 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 <laughs> awesome. It's a hard act to follow. <laughs> yes, as we're passing on the communion, if you're at home, if you had yours ready, hopefully, please just have that um, in hand. And or if not, go grab it. Amen. Well, good morning again, and thank you all for being here today. Thank you for tuning in live. Amen. And a big thank you from Pastor, because praise God, he is in the air. Can we praise him? He is in the air and on the way home. Amen. <laughs> God is good. So this morning, as you know, I always, God, I love it when God gives me a little twist when God throws me for a loop because God's loops are really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the scripture that I'm reading, we always associate it with giving and it still is, but it's a little bit different approach. Luke chapter 37 through 38 says, judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Now the next part is what we always associate with our, just our financial giving. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. We always, I, I don't know how many times all my life I've heard that verse only with financial giving. Mm -hmm. But this morning, I felt like I wanted to challenge us that it's about our forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because our giving, I wrote this down, our giving, your giving and receiving is linked with your forgiveness. Yeah. Sometimes we, the Lord says, our receiving back is blocked because we have unforgiveness in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I personally was challenged this week about something that offended me. It bothered me. And God said, have you forgiven that person? And I was like, wow, really a heart check. Right. Mm -hmm. And instantly I said, I'm not going to wait another second. I forgave that person. And it's not because that person didn't do something wrong. Or that I felt like forgiving, but if my God says it, I'm going to do it. Right. Amen. Amen. It's about obedience. Um, so I just wanted to challenge us in that this morning. And I w the parable came back about the unforgiving servant. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but just the first few verses. Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. And Jesus said, and he thought that was a lot. So. <laughs> Jesus said, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Amen. And really that number is not even the limit. It's that he was trying to break Peter out of that mindset. Don't put a limit on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does God have a limit on his forgiveness to us? No, he, he certainly does not. And I'm okay. so thankful for that because I mess up every single day, whether it's a thought, an action, a word. So I'm so thankful for that. And when the servant, you know, the parable, he told the, the parable and he, he came to back to the master and he said, after he had called him, he said, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Mm -hmm. The people around us, they are our fellow servants. We're just a servant in the kingdom of God and we're, there's no hierarchy. There's no up or down, lower or higher. But from our heart, let us forgive our brothers this morning. That's why I asked Pastor Warren if I could lead communion at the end. Um, it's going to be a multi-purpose multi prayer here, but... As we take communion, God says for us to examine our hearts, amen, yeah. um, and to see if there's any fault, any blemish within us. And so as we as we take communion, I want us to pray and ask the Lord to, if there's any unforgiveness, any resentment that we may be holding on to. And it doesn't mean that, again, that that person didn't do wrong or that maybe your unforgiveness is towards yourself. Often we said the two greatest commandments, love God with all your heart, love your neighbor as yourself. But we always forget the as yourself part. So we may even be holding unforgiveness towards ourselves for something that we've done years and years ago or yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, Father God, we're just going to lift up our communion elements to the Lord. I always like to do that as a representation of the body and the blood that was lifted up for us. Father God, we hold up the representation of your body and your blood this morning. 
We thank you for your sacrifice that you made for us. Lord, that we didn't deserve your forgiveness, but you forgave us anyway. You went to the cross willingly and lovingly with your hands open wide for us, Lord God. We thank you so much that you loved us and forgave us un with unlimited forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to examine our hearts this morning, Lord, and not only lift up our hands, but we lift up our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, words, and deeds, Lord God, to you today. Forgive us if we have any wrong within us, Lord, that we are holding on to, Lord, knowingly or unknowingly. Reveal things to us, Lord, so that we can release them back to you and receive your forgiveness, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We receive your body and your blood today as the loving sacrifice and forgiveness for us. Let us take of the bread of the body in Jesus' name. And now let us take of the, the representation of the blood as we drink the juice in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God is so good. We release that, we get it out in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I'm just, I also want the ultimate gift of forgiveness is to receive the gift of salvation. Amen. Especially, Amen. I believe everybody here is a believer, but we don't know who's going to be watching this video. So, we want to give everybody an opportunity to receive our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and become part of that family. So, as I pray, if you have a tithe and offering in person that you want to give, please feel free to come up and give that. If you're giving online while we're praying, it's covenantfusion.com. And Father God, we just submit again to you today, Lord. Any of us who are watching, or even if we've gone to church for years, for decades, that doesn't make us a believer. So Lord, we open up our hearts to you to examine ourselves again, Lord, to make sure that we know that we know that you are our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so Lord, any of those who are watching, just repeat this with me. Father God, Father God, I thank you that you love me and that you forgave me. I receive your forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for me and came back to life so that I can live forever with you in eternity. I receive him into my heart as well as Father God and Father Ho and the God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Praise the Lord. And we're going to put our confession, the last and final thing that we love to do to end our service, to be in unity, is our confession of faith. And we're going to put that up on the screen so everybody can do it together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor, will you grab that for me? Thank you so much. Awesome. Again, thank you all for being here today. And if you're watching, it should be on your screen as well. So on three, one, two, three. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are filled for his glory. Sunday. God bless you. See you Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! That's good.